Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at GermanPod101.com. Entmutigt, discouraged. Entmutigt, discouraged. Er fühlte sich ziemlich entmutigt nach seiner Niederlage. After his defeat, he felt very discouraged. When you lose, so you were like, oh gosh, I put it so much focus on this, it meant so much to me and it didn't work out, so I'm discouraged, um, entmutigt. Enttäuscht, disappointed. Enttäuscht, disappointed. Er wurde von seiner Frau enttäuscht. He was disappointed by his wife. I hope that wife didn't do something too bad. Uh, yeah, disappointed. Like it can be something really minor, like oh, I came home and I hoped she, uh, I don't know, prepared maybe a nice little lunch or something. Um, then oh no, so I'm a little bit disappointed. You shouldn't be because it's not the task of your wife to cook food, right? It can be something minor, like oh, I hope you took a picture of that car. And you didn't, so I'm a little bit disappointed. Enttäuscht. It can also be something super big, like, oh, wow, you cheated on me, I'm very disappointed. And I hope that didn't happen to any of you. Bad feelings. Didn't happen to me, luckily. I mean, I guess. Who knows? I guess. I have never been cheated on. Knock on wood, right? Sich sorgen. To worry. Sich sorgen. To worry. Die Frau sorgt sich um die Rechnung. The woman worries about the bill. If you worry about money, that really sucks, because um, mostly you cannot really do so much about it. Even worse, for example, if you worry about your kids, like, oh, my kids go to school and they don't come back, they should be here already, then this is super, like, frightening and you worry. Man sorgt sich. If I'm a parent, I worry about my chill. Ich sorge mich um mein Kind. Try not to worry so much about what might happen or might not happen, as long as you cannot really influence it anyway. Besorg. Anxious. Besorgt. Anxious. Die Klausurergebnisse werden morgen bekannt geben und ich bin sehr besorgt darüber. The exam results will be announced tomorrow and I'm very anxious about it. Yeah, I remember when I had my um, A-levels in school, like here we call it Abitur, like our final exams from school. Uh, there were some subjects I was like anxious about because I actually tried to study a lot as much as I could. Um, but then some just really didn't work out so well, I had the feeling, so I was like anxious. Um, after all, don't worry about me, I'm fine, I, I passed, I went, I could go to university, to college, but yeah, I think as everybody of us went to school, we know the feeling of being anxious about some exam results coming out. Düster, gloomy. Düster, gloomy. Nachts ist es draußen düster. It is gloomy outside in the night. Yeah, um, actually, for me, this is not such a sad word in this example phrase because I like kind of like the gloomy nights, exciting. But for example, if you're a gloomy person, that's kind of negative. If you like always like, oh, no, this is going to be so bad. Like I can see the future. It's everything is going down. Like that's very gloomy. Mm, uh, yeah, uh, there's no reason to be gloomy, I guess. We, we live in a pretty cool world, even though there's a lot of trouble everywhere. Also, gloomy, it makes me remember this one last uh, Rolling Stones song they came up with, Doom and Gloom. It has nothing really to do with this lesson, I just wanted to bring it up because it's a great band. Ungerade, odd. Nummer 11 is a Beispiel für eine ungerade Zahl. Number 11 is an example for an uneven number. Even numbers, now we have odd numbers. In German it's a little bit easier, it's just gerade and ungerade. So in many things, if it's the opposite in German, you just put un in front of it. For example, if you measure something really exactly, you say genau, and if it's really incredibly unspecific, not exact at all, it's ungenau. So just put it un in front of the word, you're making the meaning the opposite, or making it like deny the actual meaning. So gerade, even, ungerade, uneven, or in terms of numbers, odd. German logic and words is good. Nummer 7. Berechnen. To calculate. Können Sie die Kosten für die Lebensmittel berechnen? Can you calculate the cost of the groceries? Yeah, my grocery costs are not too big, my fridge is always empty. <laughs> There's not too much to calculate about it. I could maybe eat a little more, then I would also have to calculate more costs for my groceries. Nummer 8. Number 8. Plus. Plus. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 1 makes 2. Super easy one. Uh, just like plus is almost plus, 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 plus. Probably will not get too much confusion with this word. Calculating in German is probably as simple as it is in English for you guys. 
Number nine, thought you guessed it already, minus minus eight minus one is seven. Eight minus one is seven. Is that too simple for you guys? So let's put eight minus five. That's harder. Eight minus five is three. Eight minus five is three. Yeah, you can go on. I mean, I'm probably not the right one to teach you plus and minus. I'm here to teach you the words. And you see minus, minus, almost as simple as plus and plus. Calculating in German. You got it. Number 10. Nummer 10. Mal times. 3 mal 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. Yeah, there is this, uh, do you know Pippi Longstrong? This, um, yeah, not cartoon, but child story character. And there's a song, I don't even know how it is in English, but in German they sing. 3 mal 3 macht 9. Wie, 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 wie. Going on, and so it's like 3 times 3 makes 9. Da, 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 da. Um, that's probably the easiest way to remember what is 3 times 3 in case you're not so good with numbers. <laughs> there's a math rule is in German Punkt vor Strich. It's point before stripes. Like plus and minus, it's kind of like stripes. Whereas mal and the tile, there are dots. Calculating, if you have a chain of numbers, you always first calculate the dots, the times you see divided by, before you calculate plus and minus. Why I'm telling you this, just to show we do it the opposite way, we have plus minus. Now we have mal. Onkel. Uncle. Onkel. Uncle. Mein Onkel züchtet Rinder. My uncle raises cattle. Again, uncle German, uncle English, very similar, very easy to remember, I guess. My uncle, at least one of them, actually doesn't raise cattle, but he's a farmer in a town not so far from here, so I love to go there. I'm living in a farm here, but also it's cool to go on his farm. But yeah, it would be so cool to have an uncle who actually raises cattle, like being a little bit of a cowboy sometimes. Yeah, that's like a romantic imagination. I like to be a cowboy. Whee! Okay, like the wise man in the family, number seven. Großvater, grandfather. Großvater, grandfather. Ich habe diese Uhr von meinem Großvater geerbt. I inherited this clock from my grandfather. Yeah, it's great to have a grandfather for all of those uh, of you who have. They always have these cool stories from back in the day. They are, at least in, in my experience, they have these great storytellers. They've seen the world and, and they can tell you about their experiences. They're so wise. Just maybe it's also growing up, uh, having them being so much older that it just gives you so much respect of what they've experienced. So. I don't know, I just like to listen to stories of my grandfather, meinem Großvater. Or actually, what you also say instead of Großvater, which is a little bit more formal, is Opa. Just like, yeah, I don't even know exactly what, what you would say in a short form in, in the US or in England, but when we call, like, like we call daddy, our father, we would call our grandfather, hey Opa, 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 Opa. Like all the children, ah, Opa, sa. like, oh. Grandfather is there. <laughs> Number eight. Schwiegervater. Father-in-law. Schwiegervater. Father-in-law. Ich gehe zum Spiel mit meinem Schwiegervater. I'm going to the game with my father-in-law. Yeah, that's something really cool. If families come together, you have a boyfriend or a husband, wife, whatever, and you uh, get along really good with the family of your partner as well. Especially, for example, if you're interested in the same sports, imagine you're even interested in the same team. You can go to a game together and just makes you, your families grow together even more. Bonding by sports, I think that's one of the easiest ways to do it. As long as you have the same interests. It doesn't really work to say, hey, let's go to see my team. And he's like, oh, I hate soccer. So, having all this male part of the family settled, let's go to the beautiful side, to our girls. Number nine, Mutter, Mother. Mutter, Mother. Meine Mutter macht unglaublich leckeren Apfelkuchen. My mother makes incredibly delicious apple pies. Um, yeah, whenever I come there, she's like, hey, can I prepare you something? Yeah, I think there are many moms who are really good in cooking something specific or even more things appreciate it as long as they enjoy doing it and it's not just like work for them 
they enjoy doing something good for you, like mothers love to take care for their sons, I know this. And then you can enjoy the apple pie, she enjoys the time with you. Just go visit your mom and have an apple pie with her. Number 10, Tochter, Daughter. Tochter, Daughter. Unsere Tochter ist Doktorin. Our daughter is a doctor. Wow, great. That's a hard field of study, but she helps people to survive. Cool. Number 11. Mir geht's auch gut. I'm fine too. Oh uh, yeah, that's also like the response in this typical conversation. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. And you? Oh, I'm fine too. Mir geht es auch gut. I'm fine too. Number 7. Ich bin müde. I'm sleepy. That's also legitimate to say, like, if you really had a rough day or haven't had enough sleep last night and you feel so tired or sleepy and you're like, ah, ich bin müde. You can say you're tired, it's not impolite or it's not like the other person would be worrying about you if you say, oh, I'm sleepy. But it also makes clear that, hey, you're not in the best mood right now, probably you're not going to start crazy stuff or something. You're just a little bit sleepy. Ich bin müde. Ich bin ein bisschen müde. Recently I've been quite sleepy from time to time because I started a new job and I have to wake up very early every day so I come home sleepy. But, um, yeah, that's the way it is. But that's no problem. I at home I like calm down a little bit, have lunch, have a coffee and then everything is cool. Then I'm fine. Mir geht's gut. Number eight. Ich fühle mich schlecht. I'm feeling bad. Yeah, apparently if you're not really feeling good and the person who asks you how are you is probably like a friend of you or a family member that you want him or her to know how you feel, um, then you could say, hey, if, if you're really not feeling good, you can say, hey, I'm feeling bad. Mir geht es nicht gut oder mir geht es schlecht. I'm feeling bad. Maybe because you've done something wrong or I don't know, also maybe because you ate something wrong. It's like physically you're feeling bad. But in general, yeah, if, if for example, if you've done something wrong and you know it and it's still in your head it occupies your head and you want to like talk with somebody uh, about it and then somebody you know you like you trust comes to you and ask you hey how, how are you doing and then that's your opportunity to say hey ich fühle mich schlecht I'm, I'm feeling bad and then he would probably ask oh what's up and then you can come out with what happened or with your problem yeah usually it implies if you say you're feeling bad that the other person politely would ask What's the matter? Number nine. Ich bin okay. I'm okay. That's also just like, hey, pff, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I nothing, nothing really to talk about. Also implies that you're not doing really great, but really you don't want to talk about anything. Maybe you actually feel bad, like in the previous example, you're feeling bad, but you really don't want to talk um, about it with a the person. Then you would just say, Ich bin okay. I'm okay. Sometimes also the other person maybe would would ask him. What's up? Like, why, why are you not doing fine? Like, oh, never mind, it's alright. Then the person knows, okay, um, yeah, probably not too big of a deal, but he doesn't want to talk about it. So if you're not doing really great, but you also just want to keep it for yourself, or well, it's not a big deal, you can say, Ich bin okay. Number 10, and that's my favorite, Mir geht es großartig. I'm great. I, I actually say this quite often, like when other people maybe just would say, I'm fine. I I don't know, like if somebody asks me, how am I? And I'm having no problem, I'm, I'm doing good. Why not just saying, Mir geht es großartig. Hey, I'm doing great. I, I like the positivity about it. And mostly it also, kind of a little bit contagious the other person oh cool like he's doing great it's like he's a smile on his face it's already a positive atmosphere in the room so yeah I, I really if, if I'm doing good I like to I like to say hey I'm great like there's nothing to complain about on the other hand sie liegen falsch you're wrong that's like if you're really like arguing and want to say no what you say is just completely wrong try probably not to say it with this harsh German accent sie liegen falsch uh, that's bad that's very aggressive Say it more like nine, you didn't falsch. Try to say it carefully, then people don't misunderstand it and won't think you just want to fight. Vielleicht. Maybe. Uh, yeah, that's a very vague answer for anything. It doesn't really help anybody to say vielleicht. Hey, do you come to my birthday party tomorrow? Vielleicht. Oh, do you want to go shopping with me next week? Vielleicht. See, it, it's not like a very satisfying answer. Maybe it's sometimes a good option if you don't want to disappoint a person by disagreeing, but you also don't want to agree, so you just say, Vielleicht. Call me, maybe. Ruf mich vielleicht an. Ich stimme nicht zu. Nein. I don't agree. No. That makes it really clear that you're really not agreeing. 
it's important to make your point clear. It's important to not only agree for the sake of agreeing. And sometimes you all have different opinions, and then it's important to stand up for yourself and say, Hey, I don't agree. Ich stimme zu. I agree. Yeah, very easy. I agree. Whatever you agree on, you can say, Hey, I agree. Ich stimme zu. Ich stimme zu. Nobody will complain about you agreeing. I agree. Sometimes I talk too much here. See? Um, I hope you disagree. <laughs> das ist wahr. That's true. Das ist wahr. Yeah, it's like, Mom, even if she knew it before or not, but wow, that person has a point. Ich bin allergisch gegen Erdnüsse. I'm allergic to peanuts. Uh, yeah, this happens. If you are, don't eat peanuts. And um, if you're not sure whether there are peanuts in your food or not, it's a good idea to ask or just to um, raise attention to the waiter. Hey, ich bin allergisch gegen Erdnüsse. So, please don't bring me any peanuts. Number 12. Wasser bitte. Water, please. Other than in the US and Germany, it's not common that you get free water at the table um, during your uh, evening in the restaurant. Uh, you always have to order it, unfortunately. So, whatever you want to drink, if it's beer, coke, or just like um, water from the sink, you will always have to order it and pay it. So, um, don't expect the waiter to bring you water for free. If you order water, then it also will appear on the bill. But therefore we used to have sparkling water, which in my opinion is way better than just pink water. Come on, so boring. Wie viel kostet das? How much is it? Yeah, if you're really thirsty, want the water, but are kind of out of money, then you should ask maybe how much it is, and then you can use this phrase, wie viel kostet das? How much is this? Or, yeah, and anything in the souvenir store, there's like this stupid little thing you want to bring home, but you don't want to spend a fortune on it, then better ask before how much is this, wie viel kostet das? Oh, see, sun is coming out. Now is the right time to travel here. First learn the sentence, but then travel here. Yeah, you see when the sun is shining like this, you should pack your stuff. Ich möchte 10 von diesen. I'd like 10 of these. Um, I remember when I went to Brazil, um, there's always this fa so-called feira, it's like a fair where they sell food and toys and everything, but then of course the most exciting for me were the fruits, because they had so many exotic fruits, and then I went there and like, oh, I had like 10 of these and 5 of these and 3 of that, and there were fruits I've never seen, so I wanted to try. Um, so this might happen to you if you come here that you see fruits or vegetables that are not so common in your country. Then you can really use the sentence. Yeah, you should always try the new stuff. Ich möchte das hier. I'd like this. Coming back if you're at the fair and you really don't know, like there's something you've never seen, but then you want to point at it and say you want this. And you want to impress the one who's selling you, the seller. <laughs> speaking German, then you can just say, ich möchte dies, and he will be like, cool, here you got it. Number 16. Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at germanpod101.com. Hello? Hello. Hello? Hello? It's usually used between friends, and usually you add, hallo, wie geht's? It's, hello, how are you? Guten Morgen. Good morning. Guten Morgen, good morning, and obviously it's used in the <laughs> very casual would be just morning, morgen, guten tag, good afternoon. Guten tag means good afternoon or good day. You don't usually say it to friends. Guten tag. <laughs> Wie heißen Sie? What's your name? Wie heißen Sie means what's your name. Wie heißen Sie is a very formal way um, to say it. Between friends it would be more wie heißt du. Wie heißen Sie? Ich heiße Alisa. What's your name? My name is Alisa. Ich bin. I am. Ich bin heute gut drauf. Uh, I am in a really good mood today. Ich bin im Urlaub. I am on vacation. Wie geht es Ihnen? How are you? Wie geht es Ihnen? And then, mir geht es gut. How are you? I am good. 
Es freut mich, Sie kennenzulernen. Nice to meet you. Hallo, wie geht's? Es freut mich, Sie kennenzulernen. Hello, how are you? Nice to meet you is a very common sentence. Mir geht es gut, danke. Und Ihnen? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Mir geht es gut, danke. Und Ihnen? I'm fine, thanks. And you? It's the answer to uh, if you get asked, wie geht es Ihnen? So when you're talking to friends, you can actually say, mir geht es gut, danke. Und dir? Bitte? Please. Bitte, please. Kannst du mir bitte das holen? Can you please bring that to me? My mom tells me a lot. Please, Lisa, today do the laundry. Blume, flower. Blume, flower. That's one of my favorite words too. Meine Lieblingsblume sind Orchideen. My favorite flowers are orchids. Danke, thank you. Danke, dass du heute das für mich gemacht hast. Thank you for doing that today. Du, you. Kannst du heute mit mir einkaufen gehen? Can you go shopping with me today? Freund, friend. Ein guter Freund ist wie Familie. A good friend is like family. Geld. Money. Geld macht nicht unbedingt glücklich. Money doesn't necessarily make you happy. Glücklich. Happy. Ich versuche immer glücklich zu sein. Um, I always try to be happy. Mich machen die kleinen Dinge glücklich. Um, the little things in life make me, <laughs> make me happy. Liebe. Love. Liebe, love. Ich finde, Liebe ist das Wichtigste zum Leben. I think love is the most important thing in life. Oh. Ähnlich, similar. Ich sehe meinem Bruder ähnlich. I look similar to my brother. Ä is the A-Umlaut in CH, which you kind of pronounce here and it's kind of a I always explain it as a snake like so ähnlich schlecht bad das schlechte Wetter would be the bad weather so there's an e again depending on the article das schlechte Essen the bad food schwierig difficult ich fand Mathematik immer sehr schwierig always thought math was very difficult. Interessant, interesting. Ich finde Kunst sehr interessant. I think art is very interesting. Es gibt auch viele interessante Personen. There are a lot of interesting people. Sein, be, means to be. A little complicated because ich bin, a version of sein, but because it's ich, bin, it's, uh, it changes. So it's kind of like to be, but then in English it would be the same. I am Alisa. Ich bin Alisa. Ich bin ab morgen im Urlaub. I am gonna be on vacation tomorrow. Hawaii. I wish. Haben. Have. Ich habe mir heute sehr viel vorgenommen. I have planned a lot for today. Tun, do. Tun means to do. Tun is used in a very casual way. Tust du mir den Gefallen und um, machst heute die Küche sauber? Uh, can you do me the favor and clean the kitchen? Sagen, to say. Ich sage sehr oft okay. I say okay a lot. Meine Kollegen sagen, dass ich sehr gut arbeite. My colleagues say that I work very good. Können, be able to. 
means be able to or can. Ich kann mehrere Sprachen sprechen. I am able to speak different languages. It really means that you're capable of or you can do something. Ich kann Kleidung designen. I am able to design clothes. Finden, find. Ich finde means when you're expressing your feelings or when you're expressing something you want to say to someone. Or finde means to really find something. So as you guys probably know, but um, Easter is really big in Germany and um, uh, die Kinder finden Ostereier im Garten. The kids find Easter eggs in the garden. Erzählen, tell. Immer wenn ich aus dem Urlaub äh, zurückkomme, erzähle ich die aufregendsten Geschichten. Um, when I come back from vacation, I always tell the most uh, amazing stories. Als Kind hat meine Mutter mir Märchen erzählt. As a kid, my mom used to tell me fairy tales, the most famous uh, Fairy tales Märchen are from the Grimm brothers and they're actually German. And I really used to love uh, the Rotkäppchen, it's Red Riding Hood. Fragen, ask. When you're asking your teacher, for example, um, Hallo, Herr uh, Müller, ich habe eine Frage. Hello, Mr. Müller, I have a question or can I ask a question? Die Woche, week. Die Wochen, weeks. Meine Woche hat sehr gut angefangen. My week started very well. Die kommenden Wochen werden heiß. The next weeks are going to be hot. Der Monat, month. Die Monate, month. Mein Geburtstagsmonat ist Januar. My birthday month is January. Was sind deine Lieblingsmonate? What are your favorite months? Das Jahr, year. Die Jahre, years. Welches Jahr ist dein Geburtsjahr? What year is your birth year? Die letzten Jahre vergingen sehr schnell. The last years went by fast. Wie viel Uhr ist es? What time is it? <laughs> yes, obviously, when you want to know the time, uh, you ask this and it's used at work. It's neither formal or casual. You can use it with friends. You're in the city and you forgot your watch. Entschuldigen Sie, wie viel Uhr ist es? Excuse me, what time is it? It's a very common phrase and used everywhere. Der Tag, day. Die Tage, days. Mein Tag hat heute sehr früh angefangen. My day started very early today. Regnerische Tage, rainy days. Der Moment, moment. Die Momente, moment. Was war dein schönster Moment? What was your most special moment? Die Momente im Leben. The moments in life. Want to speak real German from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at germanpod101.com. Mir ist nach. Mir ist nach. I feel like. Mir ist nach. I feel like. Mir ist nach Kino. Mir ist nach Kino. I feel like going to the cinema. But a more common way to say is um, ich habe Lust auf or if you wanna say it with a slang, <laughs> um, you can say ich habe Bock auf anything. Ich frage mich ob. Ich frage mich Ob. I wonder if. Ich frage mich ob. I wonder if. Ich frage mich ob unser Lehrer krank geworden ist. I wonder if our teacher got sick. Yeah, so translated it would mean I asked myself if our teacher 
get sick because you don't really say ich wundere um, which means wonder um, that's not a common way to say in German if you want to express that you're wondering about something es sieht danach aus als ob es sieht danach aus als ob it seems like es sieht danach aus als ob it seems like es sieht danach aus als ob es gleich regnen wird es sieht danach aus als ob es gleich regnen wird it seems like it would soon start to rain wenn es nach mir gehen würde wenn es nach mir gehen würde if it were up to me wenn es nach mir gehen würde if it were up to me wenn es nach mir gehen würde hätte ich schon längst gekündigt if it were up to me i would have already resigned so you you, you say it if you want to express that um, if no one has something against it or if i'm allowed to decide then i would do it like this and that wenn es nach mir gehen würde kannst du mir mehr über erzählen kannst du mir mehr über erzählen can you tell me more about kannst du mir mehr über erzählen can you tell me more about for example if someone went to new zealand and you really want to um, go to new zealand too someday and you want to learn more about the country then you can be like Kannst du mir mehr über Neuseeland erzählen, about your journey um, in New Zealand? Because, yeah, I'm really interested and I want to know about the um, places to go and the, some places that you recommend. So, yeah, that would be an example to use this phrase. Kannst du mir mehr über deutsches Bier erzählen? Kannst du mir mehr über deutsches Bier erzählen? Can you tell me more about German beer? Es geht dich nichts an. It's none of your business. Es geht dich nichts an. It's none of your business. So many people say it by themselves. If, if they don't want to get too intimate about an issue, they don't want to um, come too close to someone. So the next one is Halt den Mund. Shut up. So, I mean, it's not very nice to say to someone Halt den Mund. Lass mich in Ruhe. Leave me alone. Lass mich in Ruhe means leave me alone. So this one you say if you just want to be alone by yourself, if you don't want to be bothered by anybody, but also if you're angry and maybe had a fight with someone and then you just don't want to continue the fight anymore, you just don't want to get attacked or offended anymore and you say okay just leave me alone i'll go into my room and please don't disturb or bother me <laughs> willst du mich veräppeln are you kidding me willst du mich veräppeln are you kidding me so actually you don't really say veräppeln <laughs> that's not a very common way to say maybe they said it like that many years ago <laughs> or um, older people might still say veräppeln was auch immer whatever was auch immer whatever so this also depends on the context you could say that during a fight if you want to stop arguing with someone you say okay just whatever was auch immer or you could say it if you are explaining something and but i don't know you don't really you, you can't find the words or something and you can also say okay it was this and, this and that was auch immer. Doesn't really matter. If it's not that important, then you can use that too. Ich werde die Survival Fails Series auf GermanPod101.com beenden, indem ich mir zwei Lektionen jeden Tag anhöre. I'll finish Survival uh, Phrases Series on GermanPod101.com by listening two phrases a day. Uh, survival with German language requires some survival lessons, I guess. Go through the survival lessons and take care you follow all the steps I'm going through with you today. And then we make sure that you will be on track with all your goals in learning German. Ich werde ein deutsches Buch zu Ende lesen, in dem ich zehn Seiten jeden Tag lese. I'll finish reading one German book by reading ten pages a day.
Um, I know we have some great German philosophers like Goethe and Schiller. Maybe you should not start with this kind of stuff. It's a bit heavy. Even German speakers struggle to understand all that stuff. Take something easy and then reading is fun. I think reading German is a great way to master the lot of German language. So go ahead. Ten, ten pages a day. Make sure. Ich werde meinen Deutsch test bestehen. I'll pass my German test. Um, yeah, whatever test that is, like there is all this A1, A2, B1, B2, or if it's um, yeah test stuff, there's the Goethe Institute. All those are great. If you if you plan on studying in German, then you have to um, you have to reach a specific level and um, pass in a test. I think that's usually either the Goethe Institute or the C1, and there's test stuff, DSH. So if you plan on studying in Germany, you should make sure that you pass in one of those tests. They're a bit higher than the B2 level, and yeah, listening to these lessons here is the first way to get there. Ich werde einen deutschen Film komplett verstehen, indem ich ihn jeden Tag gucke. I'll fully understand one German movie by watching it every day. I'm not so sure if that's the best way to do it. Might get quite boring after the third, fourth, or fifth time. But I don't know, if you like binge watching all over the same movie, yeah, then might be a good idea to just switch over to German at one point, so if you already know all the phrases by heart in your mother tongue, that could be a way. I like Bad Boys. That's a good movie. Wouldn't watch it every day though. Okay, I think you. I think we'll find better ways to uh, make you learn German without you having to watch the same movie every day all over again. Okay, let's try with the next one. Ich werde vor meinen deutschen Freunden auf Deutsch eine drei Minuten lange Vorstellungsrede halten. I'll give a three minute introductory speech in German to my German friends. Um, yeah, first um, thing to do here is find some German friends. Um, if you live somewhere else, I don't know, but on the other hand, yeah, Germans are everywhere. So just go out, shout some of uh, the stuff that you already learned with me and then Whoever speaks German will be like, oh, I understood that. So you can find some German friends this way. Then give them your three minute introductory speech and then they already know who you are. And so, yeah, maybe they are friends afterwards. Maybe not, but at least you've um, mastered one of the steps to reach your German goals for the year. Bitte rufen Sie die Polizei. Bitte rufen Sie die Polizei. Call the police, please. Yeah, so if you got caught in an emergency, <laughs> then you can just say to someone, call the police, please. Haben Sie Fieber? Haben Sie Fieber? Do you have a fever? So if someone's not feeling well or looks really sick, or um, if you're at the doctor, then he might ask, Haben Sie Fieber? Ich habe meinen Reisepass verloren. Ich habe meinen Reisepass verloren. I lost my passport. I once thought I had lost my passport, but then luckily I found it in my suitcase, so I was safe. Nothing happened. <laughs> ich glaube, ich habe etwas Schlechtes gegessen. Ich glaube, ich habe etwas Schlechtes gegessen. I think I ate something bad. So when you're not feeling well, when you have a stomach ache, then you would say, Ich glaube, ich habe etwas Schlechtes gegessen. Ich brauche einen Arzt. Ich brauche einen Arzt. I need a doctor. If you want someone to um, call an ambulance, then you would be like, ich brauche einen Arzt. But that sounds really, really urgent. Rammstein. Rammstein, a hard rock band. Rammstein. So Rammstein. Rammstein, a hard rock band. Rammstein ist eine international sehr bekannte deutsche Hardrock-Band. Rammstein is an internationally well-known German Hardrock-Band. Tokyo Hotel. Tokyo Hotel. Tokyo Hotel, a rock band. Tokyo Hotel. Tokyo Hotel, a rock band. Tokyo Hotel ist eine deutsche Rockband, die 2001 gegründet wurde. Tokyo Hotel ist eine deutsche Rockband, die 2001 gegründet wurde. Yes, yeah, so I remember them. They were very famous when I was a teenager and um, 
they um, had like all these 13 year old girls fans <laughs> and yeah they are really crazy about them but yeah that's it <laughs> die Ärzte die Ärzte die Ärzte a punk band die Ärzte a punk band die Ärzte sind eine der bekanntesten deutschen punk rock bands die Ärzte sind eine der bekanntesten deutschen punk rock bands die Ärzte is one of the best known german punk rock bands yes yeah, so they're a very uh long existing too they came out with this um very famous song it's very old it was called Männer sind Schweine <laughs> men are pigs <laughs> and in when Männer sind Schweine <laughs> like yeah it was um they were talking very bad about men yeah they became very famous with it so scorpions 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 a rock band scorpions scorpions a rock band rudolf schenker is das einzige konstante mitglied der scorpions the scorpions only constant member has been rudolf schenker um i don't know them that well i didn't even know they were a german band modern talking modern talking a pop band modern talking modern talking a pop band die sehr bekannte band modern talking besteht aus dieter bohlen und thomas anders die sehr bekannte band modern talking bestand aus dieter bohlen und thomas anders the very famous band modern talking consisted of dieter bohlen and thomas anders Dieter Bohlen is actually uh, one of the judges of um, Deutschland sucht den Superstar, <laughs> which is um, similar to American Idol or the singing competition show. Ich kann mir vorstellen, eines Tages Deutschland zu bereisen oder dort zu leben. Ich kann mir vorstellen, eines Tages Deutschland zu bereisen oder dort zu leben. I imagine that one day I will visit or live in Germany. So, if you want to live in Germany, I recommend you to live in Berlin. <laughs> I lived there for two years and it's a very multicultural city <clears throat> where lots of um, different ethnicities come together. And yeah, it's just very... In, in the summer, it's uh, really... Um, great place to be everyone is very relaxed and chill and you can just <laughs> hang out outside and drink some beer and yeah whatever have some fun ich studiere auch andere aspekte der kultur was einen anspornenden effekt beim deutsch lernen hat ich studiere auch andere aspekte der kultur was einen anspornenden effekt beim deutsch lernen hat I study other aspects of the culture too, which makes it more rewarding to study German. Yeah, so if you're interested in the German culture, you could check out um, different museums or um, study about classical music or go to the theater, which is very also cheap, especially for students. You can just go there for a few euros and yeah, enjoy some nice historical theaters <laughs> ich mag es witzige wörter auf deutsch zu suchen ich mag es witzige wörter auf deutsch zu suchen i like to search funny words in german so yeah german has um these very long words that are built out of i don't know maybe three or two to four words <laughs> Um, like, I don't know, for example, just Auf Wiedersehen, if you say goodbye, um, in a formal way you say Auf Wiedersehen, which is Auf and Wiedersehen, and Wiedersehen is pretty long. Um, I was also asked if it's not 
like hard to write it every time these long words um, or there are also funny sounding words like Streichholzschächtelchen. I think to not German speaking people, these ch or sh sounding words are um, pretty funny. <laughs> ich habe mich mit Leuten angefreundet, die Deutsch sprechen. Ich habe mich mit Leuten angefreundet, die Deutsch sprechen. I make friends with people who speak German. That's probably the best way to learn German if you can just use it naturally in reality if you get the chance to speak um, in that language. I mean, of course, it's always good to, to have German lessons and to learn about grammar and stuff to actually be able to use it and um, also to speak a lot by yourself. That should be really, really helpful. Ich schaue mir YouTube-Videos von anderen Leuten an, die mit Erfolg Deutsch gelernt haben. Ich schaue mir YouTube-Videos von anderen Leuten an, die mit Erfolg Deutsch gelernt haben. I watch YouTube-Videos of other people who have successfully learned German. I don't know anyone who successfully learned German, but um, <laughs> it would also be really helpful since German is a really um, hard language to learn, I think, as a native um, German speaker. I think, yeah, the grammar and everything is pretty complicated um, compared to other languages. So, yes, it would be really good to um, get some tips um, from people who learned it. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.